What's going on, gamers? Here we are back with some more Aliens Fireteam Elite, and today I'm going to be going over what I believe the stats and statuses in the game do. Now, some of them are improvised because I've had to use the trusty carrier right here and just shoot my way to victory, but all in all, I should be able to give you a good heads up on what the stats do in game and let you know a little bit more insight in how your guns and such work. So, if that interests you, stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back you guys and girls, as always Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. But for today I'm here to show you what the stats on your weapons and such do to help your build out. Are they worth having, what are the best ones and how does it all come together? Right so nice and easy if we just grab any gun, so say for example we grab one of my classic uses right here, the M3783 pump shotgun, just one of my standout favourite guns in the game, if you have a little look on the right here it's going to give you a list of all of the stats on it. So you've got damage, fire rate, reload time, magazine capacity, max ammo, weak point damage and stumble chance. But what do all these mean? So in games such as this, most time damage means how much damage per second. In this, it's actually damage per bullet. So if you have a little look, it's doing 182 per bullet. However, you've got to factor in a few things. So if I bop just over to the left here to my handgun, this one right here has a damage of 315. Now, like I said, it's per bullet. So if there's no attachments and there's nothing else going on in my build whatsoever, 315 should be roughly what it's hitting for on those enemy Xenos when I'm hitting them dead on, but not getting that weak point damage. However, if you looked at these two, you would straight away think that the handgun is much better than the shotgun then. If you took these at face value, you would think that this was much better to use all round than the shotgun over here then. The damage is much higher, the rate of fire is much higher, why would you ever switch to this? Now remember what I said, that's per bullet, but you've got to understand there's other things that come into effect. For example, with this one, it's damage 182 per pellet, and the shotgun fires an absolute abundance of them. Once again, a trusty target range just here. So as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pellets, each dealing that significant damage, meaning you're going to get a big chunk of change of damage as long as you can hit your targets, and if you can manage to hit them for that weak point damage, all the better. Jumping back to it, and we've got the fire rate, 1.3. The fire rate shows you how fast it fires, the higher the better for how many bullets it's going to dish out. So, so a classic example right here would be the smart gun, if I chuck that on, I'm going to show you how fast this one actually fires, and as you can see, it chucks out a lot of bullets. You're going to mow everything down because of your fire rate, it's really high, if you can get even higher that's great, but ultimately the higher the fire rate, the more bullets you're going to pump out. Sometimes the only time you've got to be really worried at would probably be late late game if you're worried about ammo and such. Next up and we're going to be going over the reload speed. Now this one's nice and easy, all you've got to know is the reload speed just over here is 0.23 because of the attachments that I've got for the shotgun. The shotgun is a little bit different because what it represents is how many per bullet. So if I take some shots with this fella just here, when I'm taking the shots and I'm reloading, it's going to take 0.23 to reload each one back into the chamber. Meaning it's not too bad overall, but it will take a little bit of time to put all of them back. Whereas if it was just one and then you want to take another shot, it's going to mean you'll reload, then you take the shot, and it's 0.23 seconds before you get one pull it back into the chamber. Now that's the most complicated bit. On a normal weapon such as the Kramer, just over here, if you'll have a look, the reload time is 1.80. Now I believe it references seconds, I haven't checked it exactly, but I'm pretty sure it's seconds. So if I'm taking some shots with the actual correct rifle, and then I'm reloading, it's going to take roughly 1.8 seconds to fully reload. Nice and easy, the main thing to remember is when you're reloading, you'll want as low as possible, meaning you're going to be able to keep shooting, you're going to be able to be back in the game. The higher the reload time means it's going to take a lot longer for it to reload, and you're going to have that downtime between taking shots. So in general, low good, high pretty much bad. Magazine capacity, another quite nice and easy one to understand, the more bullets you've got in your magazine, meaning how many you can actually dish out before you've got to reload, meaning you're going to have a lot more damage. The, in general, the more you can put in your magazine definitely works in your favour. As well as this next one, max ammo. The more you can get for your max ammo, I would say is definitely, definitely, especially if you're trying those higher difficulties, invest in some attachments that definitely chuck together some more ammo. 
the more ammo you can get can really help you out as they have a big chunk of health at late game and end game difficulties. So for example over here if I show you the Kramer, I have this one on, the drum magazine, meaning my max ammo is at 432. If however I take that off, my max ammo all the way back down to 360. If you can chuck an attachment on in your build that gives you some ammo, you definitely won't regret it for those later difficulty levels. So sticking with the Kramer, and a nice one to look at, one that you definitely want to understand, is weak point damage, 210%. So as you can see up the top there, your damage is 207. Weak point damage is whenever you hit that crit spot. So for example, most times it'll be head, on some of the Praetorians or some of the armored drones and such, it's probably going to be their rib cage. Wherever their weak point is, that's going to give you that multiplier and you're definitely gonna want it because it classes it kind of like crit damage and does an abundance more. So 207, if you've got nothing going on else in your build, that weak point damage will do 210%. So it'd be over 420, give or take, without anything else going on in your build with your perks and such. Last but definitely not least is Stumble Chance. Now this one's a little bit of an odd one, but it can be quite fun in some builds, and the Kramer is definitely one that you can build around that. So Stumble Chance of 21%. As you can see down here, also with its perks and such, you're getting an abundance more Stumble Chance. Stumble Chance is exactly like it sounds. When you're shooting at an enemy, you have a chance to kind of make them fumble, fall on the ground and skate along a little bit giving you an advantage, meaning they've got to pick themselves up again, it's very much like a not as good version of the knockdown that you can get from some of the area effects and some of the perks in game. It can be really handy and can make it so things are stumbling around at range or can't get you or stumbling around and then get hit by your flame turret and such. Really works out well in some builds, in others it can be a bit hard to pull off. Next up and jumping over to the sites in order to complete this list and we're kicking it off with accuracy. So like on this scope, accuracy plus 30%. Accuracy can really help on some builds, especially if your bullets are going all over the place with a pattern. It basically means that they're going to be more refined, more condensed, and it's going to make it so that your bullet pattern and spread is a lot less. So for example, on this weapon again right here, and I so feel sorry for this carrier, basically if I bop over to the shotgun, the more accuracy I have means that pattern right there is going to be a little bit tighter, meaning I'm going to get a lot more chance of hitting that weak point damage and hitting exactly what I'm aiming for, and there won't be quite as much spread. Exactly the same if I'm using something else, so for example this Kramer right here, the better the accuracy, the less the bullet spread will be as it fires off in the distance, meaning that I'm probably going to hit what I want a little bit more often and hopefully get a lot more damage from it overall. Next up, and we've got one that's a little bit harder to understand, but it does make sense, and that's the effective range. So this one right here gives you 25% effective range. What that tends to do is make your bullet fall off damage a little bit better. So as you can see here, it kind of starts falling off around about there, and then goes down to here. Unfortunately, we can only go by this graph. I don't think there's numbers in game anywhere. It tells you the exact digits. But if I take this off, for example, you'll have a little look that the damage fall off should lessen. So for example, just there, lessen, increase. What am I talking about? Basically, it should increase, meaning that you'll have more damage fall off the further away you're shooting. Basically, if you can, try and put a bit more effective range into your build and it will make sure that when you're hitting those things further away, the damage fall off won't be as significant and you're going to hit them closer to your initial bullet damage. So for example, you're going to hit them closer to 207 than you would have round about here and if you had this off. So if I put that back on, as you can see, it's going to hit them closer to what my initial damage should have been rather than it'll probably be about 140 or something if I'm hitting them further away without that. Next up, and another one that I don't think is too important in some builds, it may come into effect in some, say like the Phalanx and such, but in general probably not too much to worry about, and that's the ADS movement speed. Basically it's your aim down sights movement speed. So as you can see here, when I'm holding in my left trigger, I'm going to aim down the sights a little bit faster, and it's not going to make me as slow. I wouldn't worry too much about this one, it might work in some builds, but I definitely won't spec into it as much as possible because it's not going to net you too much, there's no PvP in this, don't worry too much as long as, you're, as long as you've not got absolutely terrible aim down sights, you should be fine. Now this next one I had to kind of scour through Reddit a little bit and a couple of other sources just to find out roughly what it does, if I'm wrong correct me as I'm not 100% sure, but handling. From what I can gather, say for example I bop this one on just here, as you can see it's got plus 20% handling. 
So from what I can gather, your aim down sights is a little bit faster. So as you can see, I'm zooming in, bang, a little bit faster doesn't light the world on fire like i said there's no pvp in this you don't 100 need it but if you do want it it will help you to net a little bit faster damage and maybe pit people to the post by shooting things first from what i can gather on the internet as well it reduces your accuracy when you're shooting so basically the spread is slightly less when you're moving and shooting in that aim down sights i do not know i couldn't tell the difference i'm not gonna lie but maybe that's because i didn't spec enough into it but all in all i would say handling is probably one you don't really need to worry about as long as you've got a big bang for your buck on your weapon damage a nice bit of max ammo and a nice bit of magazine i think they'll be the three that probably carry you through most things next up and going over to the recon class to show you this one put this large optics on basically replacing your scope it will give you 25 percent zoom magnification so when I'm holding in that left trigger, going for those headshots and such, I'm going to be a little bit closer to them. Or looks wise, it's gonna zoom in a little bit closer, should I say. Nice on some builds, it's not needed on everything, it all depends what you're using, but definitely if you're using something like a DMR or a sniper, plus 10, plus 25% can be really, really nice. I do worry sometimes if you go too high, you can't see everything that's around you, coming at you, and it definitely can cause a little bit of grief later on. Also, another thing you've got is a scope replacement. So back over to that, rather than the zoom magnification only, if, say for example, I chucked on this one, replaces aim down sights with a full scope that slightly illuminates your view. So as you can see, whereas before we could see our character still, now we are gonna be completely in scope. I would definitely only recommend this for someone who's in a really nice team, who's got people in front of them, making sure they're not gonna get hit because you won't be able to see your surroundings and you're definitely going to be in a little bit of trouble unless you can get a million headshots and definitely dodge roll your way to victory. But yeah, overall I would say the aim down sights is quite nice, plus magnification is okay, anything up to 25%, probably not too much and I wouldn't recommend unless you're going for a really kind of niche build, probably don't chuck a scope on. And just chucking you over straight to the consumables, just so you can understand a little bit on these. Things like the electroshock rounds, as you can see here, they're gonna reload your current weapon, 25% of his max ammo, but the main thing you're using this for gives you a chance to briefly stun targets. This can work with a lot of other things in builds, your perks and such, and in your team. So anytime you can shock, debilitate, stun, knock them down, can really help out your team and make extra damage come about with some of the perks in your grid. Also, another great one is this just over here, Cryo Grid. This right here debilitates your targets and makes sure their speed is reduced when they're in that field. Really nice for taking things out and giving your team a little bit of extra leeway. So in general, this reduces speed. And lastly, just going over some skills and just showing how effective they can be as soon as I remember what I'm doing. So say for example, this right here, micro rockets, launches free rockets that detonate on impact, creating a large shockwave that damages and stumbles your foes. Now you know exactly what stumble does, but some things can be modified and some perks or some other skills can also help out even more. So for example, if we change that right there, you're gonna change it to concussive. Well, you are if I've made fit, there we go. Micro Rockets now fires four concussive rockets that deal considerably less damage, but have a larger explosive radius that knocks down enemies. In this game, anytime you can have a knockdown effect on your build, or at least have one in your team, I would highly recommend it. It really helps for those bigger elites. If you've got those armored Praetorians coming towards you, if you've got the really big drones, if you've got anything that you really need to take down that's gonna have a lot of health and has a significant chance of taking you out, being able to knock it down and then focus fire on it is absolutely amazing. So have a little look, see if there's things in your build that can knock things down, it will really help you. And there's some other things such as this perk for the actual demolisher than that you deal 20 percent more damage to enemies that are stunned or knocked can work really well in conjunction with these just make sure you've got at least one person in your build or team that can definitely do this and it will really help you guys out right it's quite late where i am hopefully i didn't botch anything up if i've made any boo-boos chuck it in the comments but hopefully this will help a few of you out if you're playing the game and you just want to know exactly what's going on with your build and what the stats actually do to help it or if they're not worth having in the slightest hopefully this will help you 
in general what i found was definitely weak point damage having a lot of mag having a lot of maximum ammo is probably the best thing and having a bit of stability and accuracy also helps in abundance also like i said if you can get that knockdown effect it's really going to help the team out but as always guys and girls full things gaming full things xbox take care i'll see you on the next day